The following is a live broadcast of a Lone Star Community Radio program. Recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Connors FM 104.5, 106.1, and Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. For more information on this show, please visit our show page at IRLoneStar.com slash shows. To sponsor or donate to this program, visit our donate page at IRLoneStar.com slash donate, or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com, or give us a call at 936-666-1084. Lone Star Community Radio production and broadcast is possible by folks like you. So sponsor and donate today. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Extension Hour. I'm Amy Ressler, County Extension Agent, Family and Community Health with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And of course, this is the Extension Hour. Where we talk about our people, our programs, our partnerships. We have fabulous guest every week that we are here on the extension hour and um you guys i love having master gardeners like one of my most favorite favorite guests like well actually i love all my guests but (laughs) master gardeners you know i'm i'm always just thoroughly impressed and inspired by all of all of you and especially you two in particular so i am referring to flo decker and ethel odell who are with me here today members of the master gardener association and um uh you guys are experts on vegetable planting, and we're going to talk about fall gardening today. We've got lots of great tips. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and inter- introduce yourselves. So one of the things that I'm always interested in, too, is like, what kind of people become master gardeners? Like, what did you do in your other life? <laughs> which, which one of you want to go first? Uh, well, my other life, <laughs> I was an ESL teacher, so I uh, basically was involved, and I also taught in Mexico. I would teach during the day in El Paso and at night in Juarez. Mm. And um, then I am a full-time RVer, so we have been to all 50 states. Uh, In your RV, In my RV, and we've lived in Germany for eight years. Oh, wow. So I truly enjoyed traveling. And so you probably have seen a lot a variety of vegetation. So with those uh, visiting all 50 states, every state's a little little different. Maybe the way you grow things might be a little different, but there's probably some commonalities too. Right. And in addition to, I mean, I was raised in Massachusetts, so uh, anything that I learned growing up doesn't apply here. <laughs> yeah, Texas. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> ah, okay, we're going to talk about that. So some of the things that you learned the hard way um, in one of our segments, we'll definitely get into that because, uh, you know, sometimes gardening, you guys make it look so easy. And, you know, the gardens around the extension office are just gorgeous. And like I said, you make it look easy. Um, But sometimes people do have to kind of learn the hard way. So, Ethel, tell us about you. Well, uh, I have a a history here. I grew up in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Um, We lived most of our lives, well, when I I married, we moved up to uh, Missouri. Uh And from there, I, I did some substitute teaching there. I also uh, was a stay-at-home mom, but after they went into school, I did some substitute teaching. Then we moved here to Houston, and uh, I thought, I'm gonna do something different, so I went and got my real estate license. Ah. But I grew up on a farm. We had 80 acres, and um, my dad raised all of our all of our veggies. Mm. And I was telling Flo earlier, you know, we, we were talking about uh, rotation, and my dad would plant crops of corn and sweet potatoes. We raised all of our vegetables. And at the time, I really didn't, especially the fall, that meant hard work. That (laughs) means that when I saw the leaves turning, I didn't ever think it was pretty because I knew that was work. (laughs) We had to get the potatoes in the barn and cover them up with straw. And, but as I grew older, um, I've always loved flowers. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a little brother that was kind of rambunctious and if I, if he disobeyed, I wouldn't feed him. So he'd go out and pull out my plants <laughs> wow. and the whole bit. But uh, after getting into real estate and thought, I'm going to do something even different. So I took the class for 
being a master gardener mm -hmm. and realized that I kind of knew more than what I thought I did mm -hmm. because of growing up with the, veg the veggies and uh, the whole bit. Right. I've done lots of traveling and usually when I travel, I will, uh, if we're driving, I'll snip a plant and put it in my purse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend says it's better if you steal it, it grows better. Uh, you're just, you're just <laughs> but, helping well, it we're grow. not recommending, I'm not recommending you steal plants. <laughs> But, but that's uh, a trait of master gardeners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I love gardening. It is. Mm -hmm. um, I love it because uh, it, it, I come alive. I feel good when I get out in the garden and plant, and it's I, it's not stressful. My husband hates it, but I love <laughs> being out there. You know, it just makes me feel good. You know, to know that you can grow your vegetables, enjoy them, and uh, share them with your neighbors. Yeah. So, what year did you become a master gardener? Uh, 19. Okay. Uh, that was last year. Okay. Yeah, that was awesome. last year. This yeah. is my year that, yes, yeah, so it's been. I was just looking at my slides. <laughs> yeah. I, I never yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah years start to run together. And I, yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Met some really wonderful uh, mentors, uh, you know, with Flo and Lan, learned yeah. so much. And we were a family. That makes it really good. Yes. And especially this one right here. She's a prankster, and <laughs> she, we enjoy our jokes that we uh -huh. have the whole bit. I didn't mean to interrupt oh, you. Oh, no, no, you're, you're good. You're good. So, so how long have you been a jokester? <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good part of my life after I left home. <laughs> Longer than a master gardener. Yeah. Just Believe it, it or not, I, as up through high school, I was so shy. I wouldn't talk to anybody. I really don't have any memories of high school like others do because mm -hmm. I just was so totally afraid of people almost. Uh, so even my kids, they <laughs> said, Mom, I can't believe that you didn't talk. And I go, <laughs> well, I have changed. Yeah. <laughs> we live and we learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, So yeah. how long have you been a Master Gardener? Five. This will be my sixth year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the Master Gardener Association does have an intern class um, each, each year. Um, of course, you know, just like all of 2020 this year is, is different, mm -hmm. but normally there's just an intern class um, and then the uh, Master Gardeners continue to serve by um, what we call give back hours. Yes. So you try to get as many hours as you can doing community education and then also the work around the gardens. So you guys have learned a lot and you've got a lot of great information to share with people. Um, so this is October, right? So fall gardening. And, you know, I'm thinking, I don't it's what, 80-something degrees today. Yeah. So it's still pretty warm. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, sometimes in the in the heat of summer, it's just I don't even want to get outside. But now that it's starting to cool off mm -hmm. a little bit, I'm thinking I want to get out more. So that might be something that other people like myself would be thinking, ah, maybe, maybe I'll try some gardening while it's cool. So let's talk about some of the things that you need to consider when you are doing fall gardening. What's, what's like your first, what, what would be the first thing that people would need to think about? Well, I think right now the first thing you need to think about is your soil and getting your soil prepped because um, we're actually almost a few weeks late for getting the fall veggies in. Uh, so um, you need to get a soil test, which you can do through uh, A&M, mm -hmm. and then based on the results that you get from that, you amend your soil as needed, and then you plan. Planning, I think, is one of the most crucial things. And again, I must admit, I'm a fly-by-nighter, <laughs> and, and I'm now trying to train myself to plan what I will put in different areas because mm -hmm. it depends on the soil. It will depend upon the height of the. It depends on the sun, the trees, everything in your environment. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll let... Yeah, so we mentioned soil. Yes. Yeah. I would like to add to okay. what the pertinent information she just shared in preparing your garden. You want to make sure you get in there because you have all your spring stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And you want to clean that all out because if you don't, you're going to set your garden up for uh, insects, diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would not uh, put that back into compost unless you really know what's in the garden. If you know, if you... But most of it, if you're like me, you don't know what's all in there. So mm -hmm. it's best to just discard that stuff, mm -hmm. put it, you know, put it in the garbage. Okay, so I'm going to show some of my ignorance here. No, <laughs> no, no. So when you talk about cleaning out the garden, would that just means pull out everything that's in there, or do you have to do do you have to do something deeper, further? 
Well, how do you how do you clean your garden? Yeah, you just pull out uh, your old veggies that's no longer producing. Uh, I pull out my tomatoes, whatever is not producing. I pull them out and discard them. So there's not much you want to, particularly with vegetable garden, right? There's not some not really anything that you want to leave in there to grow next year, or maybe does it depend? I don't. I don't either because majority of the crops that you grew in the spring um, have died over the summer. Mm -hmm. So what you have is just the remnants of those plants. You don't really, I mean, occasionally you might have a tomato that you could leave and right. try, but it's not, we don't really recommend it. Yes. Um, so pretty much you just want to get everything, any kind of plant matter that's mm -hmm. in there out. And then you want to turn the soil over, but it is not recommended that What's the machine? The <laughs> so road, the oh, road 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 tilling is yeah. not recommended oh, okay. because that will cause some other situations that you don't want to have to think about. So it's best that by hand, as with the pitchfork, mm -hmm. uh, you just turn it over. You add any items that you might want. You want to add a lot of compost to it. Uh, if your soil test showed that you needed certain nu nutrients, then you add those. Okay. And... So let's talk a little bit about that soil test. So mm -hmm. people can bring a soil sample up to the extension office um, and we can send it off to get, um, no. <laughs> what do we What yeah. do we do with those? Yeah, you would go to the extension office and you can get the form that is needed to send to A&M okay. up in Conroe, uh, excuse me, up in College Station. Yeah, yeah. And you can also get a bag for the soil, but you can just use a Ziploc bag too. And the instructions are all on that sh sheet that you're sending in, tell you exactly how to get it, how much to get, and where to send it. And so then you just mail your sample with that form to the Soil Testing Department of Texas A&M. Okay. And I think what I'm saying is sometimes we do have a special campaign and people bring it to our office and Brandon, our ag agent, takes a whole bunch all over at once, but that's only like once oh, a year. Right. So that, anyway. Yeah, and to add what Flo just said, that soil test is very important because you don't know what nutrients it may be mm -hmm. lacking in. And from ex personal experience, I would go out and dump bone meal or, you know, blood meal, but if it's, if your soil has a high nitrogen, you wouldn't want to add certain uh, nutrients. You know, you bring in some compost that's really rich. But that soil test is very important, so you'll know what nutrients to add to the soil. Okay. Because you could really burn your plants. <laughs> we <laughs> All, your, all I, your hard work. Yeah, we had a really ba a personal bad experience growing up. We grew chickens. We raised chickens. You don't grow them, do you? <laughs> we raised chickens. We ate every part of the chicken, I mean the egg and everything. Mm -hmm. And then we used the manure to the chicken. You call <laughs> right. it chicken crap or whatever, <laughs> but you have to be careful. You have to let it set for a while if you're going to use that in your soil because mm -hmm. it will, we burned a lot of vegetables uh, with that probably too much raw, nitrogen. it was, it was raw uh, fertilizer mm -hmm. and you have to let it set. So we learned from that as a child. So yeah, I, and the same with cow manure, any manure, right. it must set, set. and before, don't use it just straight out of the pasture. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to. And I also had a bad <laughs> experience with chicken manure because I was told, oh, it's so great. So I went to a friend's and gathered all this manure. Right. Uh -huh. And um, my husband and I almost got divorced over that because <laughs> then I watered it. And the aroma, he says to this day, it drove people for blocks surround away from us the smell but so you have to be careful of those things mm -hmm. okay on that note <laughs> that, that, that will be our cliffhanger before we take our break yeah. and we come back and we will talk more about interesting things and once you get that soil um that that soil analysis back um what does that mean what do you do with it and then what is your next step for um gardening so but we're going to take a break okay we'll come back in just a few minutes and we'll continue with the extension hour we highlight our people our programs and our partnerships we're here on lone star radio 104.5 and 106.1 and you know what it's worldwide on irlonestar.com we'll be back right after this
A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. From the beginning, the main purpose of the Cooperative Extension Service has been to change human behavior by teaching people how to apply the results of scientific research. By utilizing a holistic, multi-level approach, Extension Family and Community Health Programs encourage health and well-being for everyone. Addressing values, concerns, and needs with reliable science-based information, Extension Programs help people lead healthier lives. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Welcome back to the Extension Hour. I'm Amy Ressler. I've got Ethel O'Dell and I have Flo Decker with us, or Florence, also known as Flo. But you, you just go by Flo, right? Florence <laughs> means I'm in trouble. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> so um, Flo and Ethel are two of our star master gardeners that we have that's part of Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And um, they're at our, uh, our at our office, so 9020 Airport Road is where we're located across the street from the Lone Star Convention Center. There's some gorgeous gardens all around and I love to tell people that it's not just there to be pretty those gardens are demonstration gardens so they have examples you guys are testing things out and doing experiments because we talked a little bit when we introduced you guys about being from different parts of the country and you moved to Texas and even different parts of Texas um, growing vegetables or growing any kind of plants can be just a little different Mm -hmm. like things that do well and, and not do so well and so you guys are always testing those kinds of things and um i love looking right outside of my window of the office because um, i get to see you guys out there working and you're doing Mm -hmm. some really beautiful things with the the structures that are um that you're developing out there and you know what we could talk about that but we've got some other things that we (laughs) wanted to talk about during the break just now we were talking about there's so many more things we can talk um about because there's just so much to learn Mm -hmm. and you guys had also mentioned before we even started the show that um you know every time even you do a presentation you're learning more so even though you are Mm -hmm. master gardeners there's always lots more to learn so we've been starting kind of at the basics so we're going to clean out the soil get it ready we're going to do a soil test we get that soil test back what is it that we are looking for well when it comes back it will tell you, it gives you a breakdown of all the nutrients that are in your soil, what percentage you have, and then there'll be a place that where it tells you where you need to add and where you need to make sure you don't add mm-hmm. anything. And so you just look at that and, and adjust your soil appropriately. Okay. And we'll also, to add to that, it will... You could, it will tell you your pH level mm-hmm. because if it's too acidic, there's some things that you, sh- you need to add to it, and if it's less, to bring the acidity up or down. So that's important. It's, that's why that mm-hmm. soil test is just pertinent. So there's an, is there an ideal pH level that we're looking for? Yes, between 6 so and 6.8 6. 6. Right. for veggies. Yes. All right. For veggies. So it could be different for other ones, but it's very for different. vegetables. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. All right. And so then if it's off a little bit, what is it that you do? You just would add to amend the soil. That's when you would add whatever you would need to, to bring it up to what level that is the vegetable or the, the flower that you are, you know, you are growing. Okay. In fact, quite often in our veggie area, we have to add sand to kind of make the soil more flexible right. for our, especially for the root plants. So they will be, it won't have to fight ah. um, hard soil mm-hmm. so that it's, the texture is appropriate. So that report that you get back, does it tell you what you need to do or do you need to call your friendly local master gardener to find out? It tells you the name and the percentage. Then... Um, from there, I usually then go to my local um, 
what's right up here. The feed store. Uh, feed store and say, okay, now what do you sell that, because um, they might say nitrogen. Okay, so what out of all those bags and boxes of things on the shelf will give me just the nitrogen? Mm. The three numbers are important that you see on any of those bags of materials to use in the garden. Mm -hmm. And so the first one represents nitrogen. So if you need, need nitrogen, then you want something that has a, only that number and then zero, zero after it. Okay. Mm -hmm. and so that would be nitrogen, phosphorus, and, and potassium. potassium are the those, three. Those are the numbers, right. All right, so you're going to amend the soil, get it ready, and mm -hmm. then you want to do seeds, transplants. Do you have a preference? Depends on the on the crop. Okay. Okay, so the, again, this is kind of by families in a way, mm -hmm. because the crucifer family, which is cauliflower, broccoli, um, uh, Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts, those yeah. are best from uh, transplants. Okay. So if you know that they should be planted, say, now, then you have to consider, okay, but then when did I have to plant the seeds if you were going to do it from seed? You have mm -hmm. to back it up. I personally just buy the plant because it just works a lot better for me. Now, things like lettuce, uh, the root crops, those you want to use seed. And if something like lettuce, it, it's very crucial that you read the package that you are buying for the seeds mm -hmm. because lettuce, you should just sprinkle it on the top and barely cover it. You do not want to put it down into the soil. So um, the others, it just depends again. Carrots also, mm -hmm. barely cover. And then they will take themselves where they're needed to be. Yeah. So it's one of those things like, if all else fails, read the directions. Yeah. Yes. But actually read the directions first. Yes. Or probably it. It has a higher chance of failing, right? And right. For the seeds, yeah, and then you have your slow-growing veggies that you can use from transplants like mm -hmm. broccoli, um, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. Okay. Those, uh, that, that's the good point because we have already planted our broccoli, cauliflower, and did we, I don't think we planted Brussels sprouts yet, did we? No. But we planted those from transplant where they went into the greenhouse and started from seeds and then brought them out to us and we plant them, okay. planted them. And do you have a preference of where you get your transplants from? Well, we grow our own there at the extension. I myself will, if I need more, I go to the feed stores, mm -hmm. but I also have bought some in the box stores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it just, What's available? <laughs> okay, that makes so there's the, it. It depends on what works best for mm -hmm. you and right. what's available and where where you're right. at. Right. Because you mentioned that um, we grow our own at the extension office, so the master gardeners have a beautiful greenhouse that they also um, grow plants at. And then um, twice, sometimes three times a year, there's plant sales, mm -hmm. and so that's a great way to get some plants. And I, the wonderful thing about getting the plants from the Master Gardener plant sale is that you have Master Gardeners that are there to provide some information, whereas um, other places may or may not have that level of expertise mm -hmm. that are able to share with you as you buy your plants. Um, but it's wonderful that Master Gardeners do that. So two or three times a year, the fall plant sale has already passed, but there will be another one in the spring, and there will be another one next fall. Um, okay. So January. just mention that January. one. Yeah. So to find out about plant sales, um, the Master Gardener, uh, page so MCMGA so Montgomery County Master Gardener Association it's an acronym MCMGA.com is the website mm -hmm. and then also um, Master Gardeners have a Facebook page if you do Facebook so that's another good place to to find information and speaking mm -hmm. of those wonderful plant sales mm -hmm. I remember when we first moved down here from Missouri I just research with the plant sales. So mm -hmm. I came to Montgomery County on Airport Road, and that's been over like 20 some years now. Okay. And you get those vegetables and your plants all from the plant sales, and I highly recommend it, you know, because from Montgomery County, they taste better when you plant them <laughs> for some reason, you know? Well, and plus, 
we sell the appropriate plants for this area, area. Mm -hmm. whereas uh, that's not always true when you go elsewhere. They buy in large lots, mm -hmm. and it might be appropriate and it might not. The other thing, though, you have to want to take into consideration is the size of your garden, because if it's your home garden, something such as cabbage really is a large plant. So it's so readily available in the grocery stores and so inexpensive, you might reconsider even trying to grow it yourself. And you could plant something that would take up less space so that you would have better use of your yeah. garden. So do you, you guys have something that you particularly enjoy growing? Like do you have a favorite? Yeah, still does. <laughs> I, I love winter greens. Okay. And I grew up as as you uh, you all really know now on a farm. And my dad every year, you know, we had a garden, but we always had plenty. He planted winter greens, and then we share them with the neighbors, mm -hmm. the farms around. You know, they look forward to it, and they grow all winter, and they are so delicious. And you want to pick them while they're young and tender mm -hmm. because the longer they stay on, you know, growing, it, they have like the little taste is not that pleasant. Yeah. But winter greens, uh, collards, turnips, mustards, you know, those cooked together mm -hmm. are absolutely delicious. Not to mention they're very nutritious and, and they're really very good nutritious. for you. <laughs> yeah. Like the nutritionist yes, in me has right. to say that as right. well. Yeah. And one of my favorites is Swiss chard. Oh, mm. yeah. And Swiss chard also is a very beautiful plant, so yes. many people use it in their floral gardens to add color as well as um, using it in the veggie garden. And it's pretty easy to grow and grows well. Here. Yes, it's very awesome. easy to grow. It's delicious. Yeah. It's, it's very mm -hmm. delicious. You can mix them with all the other greens I, mean, I mentioned also as well. Mm -hmm. They're delicious. Yeah. Put some ham hocks in there. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of bacon. A little bacon. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay you're eating vegetables. It's you're all good. Vegetables. It's all good. <laughs> um, okay, before we move on from that, just say, and, and we're going to take a break in just a minute, but before we went to the last break, we were talking about cleaning out your garden, and you'd mentioned basil, that you don't always pull all of that out. So you kind of like save them over, so it's sort of like a transplant. T tell us just quickly about that. Usually in the past, I've lost a lot of basil because mm -hmm. the winter is just not kind to them. So I will go out and uh, cut them back first and then pull them up and just replant them in a, a pot. Mm -hmm. And you, it can be a, a nice little pot because they're a beautiful plant. And once you put them on your patio, but, you know, sometimes I'll throw some in, into the, the garage. But usually my basil, I will, I will re- do those, you yeah. know, because and and because I put it in my green drink, I put it in my all vegetables in my salad. I love it, and it's pretty. Yeah, and it grows beautiful. Basil's mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Yes, too. <laughs> it smells so good. And the bees love love the, uh, the flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. The bees are important, too, which is a whole other show. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take another little break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those tips and tricks for successful fall gardening with Flo and Ethel, our master gardeners. There are people, you guys are a big part of our program, and I feel like we have a partnership with um, all the volunteers that work with us. So people, programs, partnerships, that's what we do, Texas A&M Life Extension Service. And we are going to come back and talk just a little bit more in in a few minutes. See you then. What can the Better Living for Texans program do for you? You can learn how to increase your consumption of fruits and vegetables, choose foods that are relatively inexpensive and good to eat, make your food dollars last longer, prepare quick, nutritious meals, help your children learn how to eat healthier snacks, and much more. Our program is committed to helping people like you improve your health through providing research-based nutrition education in a friendly, cost-free, and relaxed environment. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Remember to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on your computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. Lone Star Community Radio broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. 
Hey, y'all. It's DJ Mike from Dan Simon, Texas. Join me Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. as I count down the top 10 Texas Red Dirt songs that are packing the dance floor. I'll be featuring local artists and the story behind the hits, shows in the area, as well as new songs that make you want to dance. It's Dance Time in Texas with DJ Mike on Lone Star Community Radio, 104.5 KCZW and 106.1 KZCC, Conroe, Texas, or online, IRLoneStar.com. Welcome back. We're having a great time here talking uh, with our master gardeners, Flo Decker and Ethel O'Dell. Um, we're talking about gardening and fall gardening, um, particularly vegetables, because you guys, that's kind of your specialty with the Master Gardener Association is the fall gardening. And we've talked a little bit about how to get the soil ready, how to get it, um, when to plant, um, considering the room that you have, the space available to plant, and then um, kind of um, either seeds or transplants, and it kind of depends on what what plants you want to grow. But another important thing that you mentioned um, during the break that we want to uh, focus on now is, is planting in families or, or considering the families that plants come from. So let's uh, talk a little bit about that. Okay, well, there are basically seven families within the veggie uh, group. And <clears throat> when we speak of rotation, we're not talking about individual plants. We're talking about anything within a certain family needs to be rotated to a different place. So that gets to be very challenging, and sometimes for a home gardener it's impossible, and you just do the best you can. But we have like the legume family, which would be the peas and beans, and then you have the concurbit, which is squash and cucumber. Then you have the um, crucifer, which is the big winter one because that's where most of your winter uh, crops uh, are. So those are the ones you're going to want to plant in the fall so that they're yes. growing through the winter. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. And so um, that would be cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, all of those. And I'll stop just for a second with Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are delicious and they are becoming very popular, but people don't realize that they take a very, very, very long time to mature. Mm. And so uh, many think that it's not growing when actually they just needed to have been more patient. So that it's, that's interesting because I've always thought of Brussels sprouts like baby cabbages, right? So it's just like you just let them grow a little bit and if they're baby cabbages, they don't take very long, huh? But right. they do, they take a long time. Okay. Interesting. Plus they grow on the side of the stem. Mm. And they start from the soil up. So unlike cabbage, which is grown right in the soil. So technically they're so, really not baby cabbages. No, no. <laughs> but I know. That's what we <laughs> always what thought of them as. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. But they're, they're right. the same family. <laughs> All the same family. So then we have the um, um, composite, which is lettuce. And leaf lettuce is fabulous. This, mm -hmm. this is the time to grow leaf lettuce here. And then you have the parsley or umbel family, which would be the carrots and the parsley, and the onion family or amaryllis, the goosefoot family, and that would be the beets, your Swiss chard, and your squash. Okay, So it's just that you need to be aware that there are families, and sometimes these families don't like each other. <laughs> and so you have to also research if you can even plant them in the same uh, location. Huh, yeah. So I, I was saying during the break, too, one of the things I love when we talk about gardening is that um, I see all of the analogies for life lessons <laughs> in it. But um, so what basically so for, you know, very uh, basic level for someone like me, um, what you're talking about when you're talking about rotating mm -hmm. is and, and being aware of the families is um, to prepare prevent those family feuds that can happen. So those families that don't get along, that aren't such good neighbors, you don't want to plant them at the same time? And some of them you want to plant one after the other? Am I understanding this? No, it's more that uh, there, the plants put out different nutrients into the soil. Okay. And so, and then plus, they can, there can be a problem with the insects that are offsprings yeah. because of it. Yeah. And so you really are rotating them to get a variety of nutrition in the soil. Okay. 
when it comes to the Hatfields and McCoy <laughs> situation, mm -hmm. that would be a whole family such as the um, concurrent family doesn't like, and I'm just inventing as far as which ones, because mm -hmm. I'm not real familiar. I just know it happens. But the Legume family might not do well in the same plot right. as a concurrent family. Okay. So you've got to do a little research on those things. Okay. So my analogy for, if I'm understanding this, so that the nutrients that go into the soil, it's like a community of families providing the contributions of their talent to that community so that it has all of the aspects that it needs to be a healthy community. Is that a mm -hmm. good one? That's a good mm -hmm. one. Yay. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> okay. very good. And I like to throw in some marigolds in there too yeah. because they, in my mind, and I've used them before, they fight some of the insects and I, I think of them as a peacemaker. You know, you have a, a peacemaker in the garden and mm -hmm. plus it brings out the beauty when you plant, throw in some oh, yeah, marigolds. Pretty color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very, very pretty color. And that's what you had mentioned earlier about companion plants. So mm -hmm. sometimes planting non-vegetable plants with vegetable plants so mm -hmm. that um, it provides some balance in yeah. the insect control and that kind of thing. So like sort of natural mm -hmm. uh, insect control. Yes. Yeah, and you can just research that online, you know, just go to companion planting, and there's a whole chart that shows what ones are recommended to be planted with a certain veggie and what ones you should never plant by the veggies. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, becoming a more um, researched concept today than it was in the past. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, yeah. like you said, we're always learning more mm -hmm. things about because gardening. Before Master Garden, I would just put everything together. <laughs> yeah. See if it works. Yeah, if it works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But now you, you, you know, we're more educated to know that, and we offer the classes. You mm -hmm. know, which, which explains this also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned online, so you can search online. But there mm -hmm. are some websites that. Um, that you guys actually really like, and so we're those are shared in the description of this um, of the show, and people can go back and look at them too. Um, or so this show is recorded; people can go back and, mm -hmm. and um, now what was it that they said? So a couple of that you guys mentioned the, the Aggie Horticulture website is um, you guys like that one a lot, I right? Like so it's one. http colon backslash backslash Aggie, so for Texas A&M Aggies Aggie dash horticulture at no dot tamu dot edu mm -hmm. so that's one that's one what, so what are people going to find on that website you can get these um, brochures that go in detail for i mean you could get like just one on how to, to grow cabbage how to grow broccoli each one has its own uh, pamphlet that you can download to get all the information you would need as to where you should grow it what they need in the way of fertilizer um, how much sun, how much, for, you know, so they just provide a tremendous amount of information. Okay. It goes more in depth, the website does. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, than we're you doing just, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of trying to memorize, every, you just go there and you can go, go back and refer to it, you All know, right. because you, have, you know the website. And so what happens for me, sometimes I read things and it just doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. make sense. So mm -hmm. you could read the things that are on the website and then visit with a master gardener to <laughs> explain it to <laughs> you. <laughs> right, right. Although I will say that those brochures are really very down to earth de okay. description. They're not scientific. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're not getting. Layman, layman yeah. terms. Don't, don't be misled by the term horticulture. Right. It's right. Basic right. plant info. Um, another one that you guys listed was the soiltesting.tamu.edu, which was one that um, you guys had mentioned before. So that's mm -hmm. going to give you some information about how to take a soil sample because there there are some specific things that you need to do. You can't just like dig up anywhere, right? Right. Um, and then, of course, ours um, for Montgomery.agrolife.org. Um, so that'll uh, direct you to our county extension page. And so there's lots of information there that we share. And then, of course, the Master Gardener, um, mcmga.com. And then a specific one on Aggie horticulture. You've got aggiehorticulture.tamu.edu. 
edu slash vegetable slash guides. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those ones that you're talking about that's got some really good yes. information. Great now, information. a crucial thing that we haven't mentioned is sun. Uh, the, for veggies to grow, they have to have, and it uh, depends on the veggies, but the majority need to have six to eight hours of sun a day. And that can be a problem. I know in my own yard, mm -hmm. when I first moved there, that was great. So I've set up all these vegetable mm -hmm. gardens, and I have irrigation, everything there. Well, now the trees have grown around. And so I was looking even this morning, and I'm realizing I'm not going to be able to grow very much this fall because there's too much shade. Oh. And that you'll get a lot of plant, but you won't get for, um, the, the uh, fruit that you want mm -hmm. from those plants. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you've got to make sure you've got it where it's not the shade of the house, shade of trees, shade of bushes, mm -hmm. or shade of taller plants. Think okay. about put, say, your lettuce on one side and your Brussels sprouts, say, further away because that'll be taller and that could shade your lettuce. Uh -huh. You don't want to do that. So sun and water. Sun and oh, water. Water, water is... <laughs> and nutrients. Yes. <laughs> so what, do you think people tend to overwater, underwater? Or under. We, under is probably the problem with water. I, I think... Half, yeah. I'm thinking half and half. <laughs> Depends on personality. Well, also, yeah. where they... <laughs> Speaking of analogies. Where they are directing the water. Mm -hmm. The water should be going down at the soil level, not on the plants. Okay. So you don't want to water the leaves of the plant. You want to get under and spray there. So if you have a sprinkler that is going around up in the air, that is very bad for your plants. You need to have like a drip irrigation or a soaker hose or something that puts it into the soil down at the level it's needed. Because it can cause mildew and all different diseases mm -hmm. when you spray and if you're not spraying directly to the root. That's important. And is there a particular time of day that's better? Yes, early morning or late afternoon. Okay. Early yes. mm -hmm. So you don't want to do it late at night because of the mildew problem? I think it's the mildew. Oh, yeah. we, you know, growing up, mm -hmm. my, we always did. I was early in the morning, and uh, it was because of the mildew, because it will mildew. And you do not want that. Okay. And midday, it's just too hot. It's not good. It, Burn it up. It's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys have provided some excellent um, information and we're going to take another break but we're going to come back and we're going to have the last few words of wisdom from <laughs> Ethel and Flo so I'll give you just a couple of minutes to think about that process that and then this is also this is my cliffhanger so people come back for the next segment okay. so that they don't miss those important words of wisdom that we're going to have next um, here on the extension hour um, 104.5 106.1 irlonestar.com is another uh, place to find it and you know that this will be this is recorded and so people can go back and listen um, a little bit later so you know when they're ready um, to learn more and, and you guys have already provided some really great information. So I think this is just kind of like, this is like our own little class here. <laughs> um, and we'll also mention too, when we come back, about some of the classes that the Master Gardeners offer and how to find out about those. But we are going to take a break. And we'll be right back. We have the safest food supply in the world. Strict laws and regulations restrict the usage of hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides within our food supply. Production agriculture practices and technologies such as the use of GMOs, which is not any more or less risky than conventional crop production, has allowed American farmers to produce more food on less acres in environmentally sound ways. Find out more online at pathtoplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make lives better. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available in Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world.
And we're back with our last segment here where we're talking with our master gardeners, Flo Decker and Ethel O'Dell, and we are learning all kinds of great things about fall gardening. Um, and so one of the things that we didn't talk about was um, control for seasoned veggies like insects and diseases and that kind of thing. And, all, you know, organic is something that some people really are interested in and want to do. But it's, um, you were mentioning during the break, sometimes it's, it's, may, it's impossible to be maybe totally organic. But let's talk about what is the difference between or what, what makes things organic and then what are some controls that people can do that's organic or otherwise. Okay. Well, basically for the organic, you know, you can either, of course, hand pick the things. You use the soapy water. Dawn is excellent. You can just dilute it in a gallon of water. Um, BT or neem. Ne and with BT and neem, you also, when you purchase it, it will tell you right on the container how to dilute it because you just don't use it straight out of the container. You have to mix it with water mm -hmm. and then spray it. Mm -hmm. So BT is the letter B and, and the, the letter, letter T. T. Yes. So BT. And that could be a component of some other, so you could look for the BT as far as the contents that that will help you to determine whether it has that or not. And the other one you mentioned was neem, N E E M. N E E M. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, for chemicals, you could have the seven dust or spinosa. Um, we try as much as possible to stay with the organic, mm -hmm. but with veggies. Sometimes you have to be a little more ruthless. Yeah. So if you but, want to have something left for you to eat right. <laughs> before the bugs eat it all, or the rabbits, mm -hmm. right, then you want to, um, you might need to use chemical, right? And, and from my personal experience, I had this white powdery mildew that mm -hmm. I tried to stay organic. And I tried it for, oh, oh I would say, maybe three weeks. It just mm -hmm. didn't work. So I had to switch to a fungicide. So you can't always, as Flo said, stick with the, uh, the organic because it didn't work. But mm -hmm. once I purchased the fungicide and mixed it with water and put it on it and it just went away because that mil powdery mildew and it's because I have plants that's too close together in mm -hmm. the hot Texas heat and, you know, and the humidity mm -hmm. and it just hops from one plant to another. So I had to get it you know with the fungicide yeah. and it killed it so most people they would say oh I want to go organic but you can't sometimes you can't always do organic mm -hmm. it just if you want like you said if you want to have some food or some beautiful plants right and and we should mention too I mean um, there's a lot of information out in the world about non-organic and mm -hmm. and there's some concerns about dangers with that but if if any of the um, products, chemical products that are used, are used according to manufacturer's recommendations. I mean, those have been research-based mm -hmm. and tested and tested and tested again. And they are, as long as they are used appropriately oh, and uh, based on manufacturer recommendations, then they're perfectly safe. They are not going to cause anybody any problems. So exactly. it's really not something to be scared of. Definitely, you know, organic as much as possible, but don't be afraid if... You can't, or you, you know, if something's not organic, that doesn't mean that it's going to kill you right. or make you grow a third eye or something like right. that. Yeah. <laughs> just, just follow those instructions on, from exactly. the manufacturing. Yep, mm -hmm. another life lesson. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so we said we were going to give like your your pearls of wisdom, some treasures from you guys. So I'll give you a few minutes to think about like kind of your top three tips or information, something that you would like to leave um, with, um, so that people kind of to learn a little bit more. One of my main tips, uh, especially, you know, since gardening, I would purchase plants and I wouldn't read the package to see how large they were going to grow or how, you know, bushy or whatever. And then I would have a bed of flowers that was so close together uh, that they would just overcrowd. Mm -hmm. So I would research or read the packet or get advice and say how big would this plant grow you know how flower how big this flower is going to grow mm -hmm. so you know that you know you purchase ones and space them you know you know how far to space them so mm -hmm. they won't overcrowd um, plant your 
Uh, I love planting in uh, mass. It just brings out beauty, especially flowers. Um, I'll put all, I would purchase uh, flowers and then I would just scatter them all over the yard. But it makes it beauty, brings out the beauty when you plant in masses, put them all together and have them, you know, in like a a little uh, orchestra. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it makes a beautiful symphony when you do that. Mm. And, uh, you know, watch your plant and, and see, you know, if how much water. Because, you know, you have a tendency. I do both. I have over water and under water. So, you know, find out how much water or less that the plant needs mm-hmm. so you won't kill it. Because we kill our plants from too much water or uh, overwatering. Mm-hmm. So if we can do that. That would be, and bring your kids in, your grandkids. I have great grandkids. Get them involved. They love it because they need to know. There are some kids, they don't even know where vegetables come from. They just think they all come off the shelf. Mm-hmm. But bring, get your kids involved and let them grow up to, to know how important it is to eat homegrown vegetables. Oh, yeah. And the research shows us, too, that the more involved children are in growing vegetables, mm-hmm. the more willing they are to try them and accept them which we know will have long-term effects for their health um, by just eating more vegetables. That's right. Yeah. And uh, I, I, growing up, I didn't really like working in the yard that much. <laughs> so, you know, it was like you either, you know, get out and work and do you don't have any food to eat, mm. you know. So, but you have to keep in mind that it's very important to know that it's good. Now I love it, but mm. at the time I didn't. I, it was just like work. Yeah. You know, but make it fun. My point is to make it fun with the kids. Yeah. You know, it's like do or die for us. You know, you don't plant, you don't work in the yard or the garden, you don't eat. Mm. Simple as that, you know. Right. So, and like you said, now it's very much of a stress reliever. It's a for stress you to be able reliever to do that. now. Yeah. And maybe that was why well, my mom was stayed calm. You know, she <laughs> put us to work through exactly. all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's wonderful, wonderful experience. Okay. We need to incorporate it into the schools, I think. I agree. But that's another program. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> and oh. we do have programs <laughs> for that, <laughs> for sure. In fact, that was the first thing I was going to mention yeah. was, you know, it is so wonderful that right now, well, not now because of COVID, but prior to COVID, Mm -hmm. we have many, many schools in this area now that have their own gardens, and so we provide junior master gardener assistance to those schools. We are not the doers of things. We are helping the kids to learn how to do it themselves. Right. So you don't go out and build it for them and just attend to it, but you show them how to do it. Show them how. So that they can do it by themselves. Right. Yeah. Now, something that I realize it hadn't mentioned is when you're planting by seed it is very very important once again I'm going to emphasize that you read the package because the depth with into the soil that you plant the seed makes all the difference for example as we said lettuce you don't you just sprinkle on top but then something like a bean seed is larger so it has to be planted further down and make sure you look and see how far apart you need to plant these seeds so that you don't end up with them being too crowded once they mature. Something such as radishes, you just sprinkle them and then don't be afraid to thin them out because that's, you know, they just almost grow before you blink an eye. And then you've got too many all together. So just go back and pull out a lot so of them. As they start growing. As they start growing, okay. you start pulling them out. And don't be, if don't, I know I, that's for me the hardest thing mm-hmm. is to pull something out and throw it away because I, I want them all. But if, if you try to grow them all, you'll have these spindly little nothings. So if you want a good size, say, radish, you've got to, you must do that. Um, another thing when in some times of year, or also just because of insects, it's good to be aware of the different kinds of row cover or, or frost cloth that you, you can purchase. And that comes in different weights. So just, if you're just trying to protect your plants from insects, you'd want just a lightweight. But if you're trying to protect it from frost, then you would get a heavier weight. But you're a store where you are purchasing that 
w can help you in that. And that's when I would really suggest that you go to one of the garden um, Extension. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, like a store. Really knows. I know. I don't want to name. That's what I was <laughs> trying to say. That people that have expertise you know in that go. area. Yeah. We tomatoes in particular is one that we wrap the cage totally yeah. until the plant has matured and begun to produce. Uh, something else too. Squash, zucchini, or you can grow them any time of year if you're lucky. <laughs> In this area, people need to be aware that there is the vine borer. It's a moth, and it will come, and it lays its eggs on the plant, and then when those eggs hatch, they go right down through the stem into the ground, mm -hmm. into the soil, and then... You don't realize you'll have this beautiful squash plant, and you might even get a couple of squash, and then suddenly you'll see this looks like sawdust down at the bottom. That's the end of the plant. <laughs> Throw it away quickly. But we have never found anything that will stop that mm -hmm. once it... So it's very prevalent in this area. And unfortunately, I, I know myself, I've decided that Kroger or... HEB can grow my squash. <laughs> it's, it's and there's nothing wrong with no, that. Yeah, no shame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so just be aware of some of those insects yeah. that, and nematode. Mm. If you pull up your plants and you see on the roots these lumps, that could be a good indication that you have nematode. So you cannot plant anything in that area until you've uh. killed them. And it, that's another whole topic almost, mm -hmm. how, how to go about doing that. But just watch for that when you are pulling up your plants. Mm -hmm. So speaking of other topics, I mean, obviously there is a lot um, to gardening. I mean, I think the, the most important thing is if you're interested, just get started. Just mm -hmm. try. I mean, Absolutely. nobody is like super successful the no. very first time they right. plant a garden. So trial and error, keep learning, and keep uh, looking for more information. So as we mentioned before, some of those websites that are in the show description um, are great resources to find more information. Um, and if you need those, you can always call the Extension Office. Um, we've got Master Gardeners who um, are in what we call our phone room, so they're there to answer questions um, You know, during normal business hours usually. So um, those are ways to find out more information. And then also the Master Gardeners do classes. Um, things have been kind of odd, mm -hmm. you know, obviously with COVID and that kind of thing. But generally, um, Saturday series of classes. So once a month on a Saturday, there's um, two classes that are offered um, to the public. So that's another good way oh. to get more information. In fact, we are resuming classes in January. Yay. So the second, the 16th, I believe it is, of January. But you have to check your calendar right. that we are going to uh, resume classes of course we have to limit because we follow the covid guidelines right, right. but uh, be watching for those lots lots of resources lots right. of opportunities and and then i think that this show has been just a really great educational opportunity too because you guys have provided some really good information i know i've learned a lot from from just talking to you guys about all this. So thank you so much for being on the show today. And uh, we'll be back next week. We're going to talk um, some future shows. We're going to uh, focus a little bit on 4-H. We're going to do some 4-H basics for families that are interested in 4-H. And then we we always have really interesting topics here on <laughs> the Extension Hour because we highlight our people, our programs, and our partnerships um, that we're very proud of. So uh, we will be back next Friday here, the Extension Hour on Fridays, 1 to 2 p.m. here on Lone Star Radio. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Today's show was recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and all rights and ownership are reserved to Lone Star Community Radio. 
For more information regarding this program and Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, serving the community with local programming on TV, radio, and online. If you enjoy today's program, please support us by sponsorship or starting your own show. Contact us today by phone or text at 936-666-1084 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.